Okay, so what you're looking at is my complete solution for question number 10. Uh, but let's go through and take a look at it. So um, it says to start by plotting the points um, A, B, and C, where A is at 1, 1, B is at negative 1, negative 1, and C is at 4, 1. And then it says use this particular function rule uh, to transform A, B, C and label that A, um, A prime, B prime, C prime. If I look at it, you'll see that it's just going to take Y values. I'm sorry, it's going to take X values and it's going to map X values right onto their opposites. And then it's going to take Y values and ma map them to the exact same space. So when I did that, you can see here, um, here the, the one in black is the initial triangle. And for example, when I took A and I applied that rule to it, um, instead of 1, it went to negative 1 for x and still positive 1 for y. Um, when I took b, uh, b was at negative 1, negative 1. When I did that, the x value became the opposite, so it became a positive 1, and uh, y still remained negative 1, and see the same thing that happened. So that rule turns out to be and I've got it right here written in green, it turns out to be a nice way to reflect anything across the x-axis. Uh, and it makes sense. The y values stay exactly the same, but the x's are just going to become the opposite of what they were. So by using this rule right here, we are able to map uh, this triangle, and it ends up being a reflection across the x-axis. Now the next one said that you're going to start with the original triangle ABC, and you're going to slide it five units parallel to this line that I've, I've marked in orange. Now the equation of that line is y equals 4 thirds x plus 5. So you can see here I've got a, a y-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the point x is, I'm um, sorry, y is 5. So this is a 5. And then you can see I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. So that's that slope, right? Up 4 over 3, and it has a y-intercept at 5. Now, I have to move this 5 units along, 5 units from where it is. So A has to move 5 units, B has to move 5 units, and C has to move 5 units. Well, um, to show you, if I, if I follow that slope pattern up 4 over 3, I really am moving things 5 units. So what I'm, what I'm claiming is the distance between this point C and this point C primed here is exactly 5 units. But it may not be entirely intuitive why that's the case. It's, it's the case because when I follow this, this slope pattern up 4 and over 3, you can see I make this particular right triangle right here that has sides 4 and 3. And if I have a right triangle with those dimensions, right, up 4 over 3, the hypotenuse ends up being, if I, if I solve for x, right, this, this would be x. When I solve for x, I get um, leg squared plus the other leg squared is x squared. So 9 plus 16 is x squared. x squared is 25. And then the value that I care about is this positive root x equals 5. So if I just follow that pattern and go up 4 over 3, it'll A, be parallel to the shape I had, but it'll also ensure that I'm moving it 5 units along that line. So that's what I did. I took every single point that I had, and I moved it up, um, I moved it up uh, 4 units and over 3 units, and I ended up getting this line. I hope we can erase that without messing it up. Yeah, there we go. I ended up getting this line, uh, this new shape right here that was five units um, scooted along parallel to that line. So my coordinates ended up being A, when I tracked it, right, A was um, at four, A double prime rather was at four, five, B double prime was at two, three, and C double prime was at seven, three. So this is the final transformation. And again, this is my solution to question number 10.